I'm ashamed. Hi everyone and welcome to a new video here on my channel. Today I felt a bit in the Christmas spirit once again. So my plan is that we're gonna build a gingerbread house and do a little chit chat about how it is to live in a foreign country. I want to share my opinions with you, how I experienced it, maybe I can give you some do's and don'ts or yeah, well just what I think about Germany all in all as a country to live in as a foreigner because I'm a foreigner. That feels so strange to say that I am I'm a foreigner. <laughs> you all know IKEA is Swedish but I don't know if gingerbread house is a typical Swedish thing. Maybe it is. I actually I've never seen it outside of Sweden except IKEA of course. Um, but at least in Sweden, it's very common that you build yourself a gingerbread house for Christmas, that you decorate it with candy and sweets and so on. So, what do you need for this little house here? Well, if you want to do it like me, you need a gingerbread set. You can buy this one at IKEA. It was about 3.99 euros or something like that. Euros. Then you need some kind of glue to um, put the, the house together. And our way of doing it in my family is that we always use sugar that we melt in a pan so i know some people actually use like actual glue i've never done that because i think that's cheating but i know some people use like this kind of sugar what's called sugar pastry maybe in sweden we always have these ones in tubes so it's very easy to decorate i could only find find like this bag where it says like you should like massage the bag first because it's like you can feel like like a lot of sugar is in the end of the bag and then you need some candy the, the classic Swedish way of decorating this gingerbread house is to use these kind of I don't know in Sweden they're called non-stop <laughs> I don't know if, what they're called here and I bought these at IKEA as well I always buy candy when I go to IKEA let's take a look at the pieces first crossed so that they're not broken oh the smell so nice Inside here is a little instruction, but as a Swede, or I don't know if I can say as a Swede, but yeah, as a Swede, I know how to build a gingerbread house. See what pieces go together with what, and also how to decorate it and stuff like that. But I mean, that's up to each and every one of you who wants to build such a house, and pff, I don't need that. So, anyway, the pieces so far so good. Here we have the roof. Oh, they really smell so good. I'm actually really excited now. <gasps> oh no, it's broken! <gasps> okay, it's not it's not a big deal. It's the it's the, the chimney. It's a bit broken, but I can easily glue this back together. Okay, so let's go to the kitchen and put this baby together. This was not a piece of cake. <laughs> piece of cake. Um, but this was not easy. I mean, look, it's all crooked. It's like more roof on this side than on this side because it was so hard. Like you have to be very, very, very quick before the sugar kind of dries. And the sugar is so incredibly hot and it's like the whole kitchen was smoky and I burned my finger really, really bad. I actually have to get a, go and get a cold package for it. Yeah, that's probably better. Yes, yeah, so I burned my finger really, really bad because I dropped the chimney in the in the sugar. And then I <laughs> wanted to be quick and pick it up, but then I just did this, which was not so clever, so I burned my finger. Well, I'm not gonna die because of that. Um, but yeah, you can see it doesn't look too pretty. It's very crooked. It has a lot of sugar running all over. Um, but I mean, I don't think this one would have been strong enough to hold it together either. I mean, once this is stuck, it's actually like, quite stable and I mean it doesn't have to be pretty it's a gingerbread house okay now it's time to decorate and you know I told you I want to talk about uh, while doing this I want to talk about the topic of moving to another country and I haven't talked about that at all yet so I probably should start talking about it so yeah I'm from Sweden which probably a lot of you know by now and I live in Berlin since two years back and I moved here because of love and 
I wasn't always sure that I was gonna move to Germany. You know, when I first met my boyfriend, I was like, you have to move to Sweden because I'm not moving to Germany. I'm sorry, it's not gonna happen. You know, I had never been to Germany. I didn't know one single word. Like, I knew like this classic Ich liebe dich or, you know, this kind of things like Auf Wiedersehen, like everyone knows. So knew like inappropriate things like Ich habe eine große Banane. But I mean, it's like useless things or Lederhose. Like this, this kind of words, I mean, you know, like the things you kind of learn when you when you don't know a language, you just learn like weird sentences. So this that's like the only thing I <laughs> that's like the only thing I could say in German when I met him. But then the years passed and we had a long distance relationship for three years. And like during this time, I think the idea of me moving to Berlin felt like more and more exciting. Of course, I moved here for him, but I also knew that it's a good market for me as a designer. So. Yeah, I decided to move. I don't I don't think it was like a decision, you know? It's not like I took a decision. Okay, let's do this. I'm going to move to Berlin. It was just all of a sudden you just knew it. You know? I graduated in 2015 and then um, I was home over the summer and then like the big move didn't really feel like a move, you know? I just I don't know. I didn't feel I wasn't nervous, it didn't feel special, it felt like I'm going to Berlin and I've done that so many times before. Because of the long distance relationship we always spent one month at each like place. Like either I was one month here or he was one month at my place. I think the longest time we had apart was like almost three months. So it was it was like tough, but um, yeah, so I just took my stuff and went here. Uh, I lived with my boyfriend uh, then and uh, yeah, so I studied then German for uh, six months through a Swedish university and I wouldn't have to pay anything because in Sweden university is free uh, Yeah, so when I finished this course in January, I immediately started to look for a job uh, First I got like a mini job, which is like a very German thing that you have like I Think you're not allowed to earn more than 450 euros per month. So I was uh, translating product. I actually forgot about this part of my life. So I was translating uh, product texts for uh, an online shop. They were selling like electronic stuff. Anyway, so I started looking for jobs and I got one interview quite quickly. So I went to this interview. I was so nervous because I'd never been to an interview in my life. And it was an interview for an internship as a designer. Uh, so yeah, I went to this interview. I was so, so, so nervous. And then two days later, I got a call and he asked if I wanted a job and I said yes. So I was like unemployed for like not even a month. I mean, I wasn't unemployed for so long because I had this mini job, but I mean, it didn't give me too much salary. It was like 400 per, per month or something. And I don't So yeah, know. and this is the place where I still work because I started as an intern. It was a six month internship, but after three months, they asked me if I wanted to to keep working there, like full time. And I said, yeah, sure. So after three months, I got a full time job instead of a six month internship. So that was, I was very, very lucky. That was good. And I've been working there now for two years in February. Jesus, time goes, time goes so quick. Okay. So, <clears throat> what did I find the hardest to adjust to when I moved to Germany? Yeah, so I was actually surprised that, uh, how different Germans and Swedes are because I mean the countries are so close and I mean like how they act you know and how they for example I feel very very Swedish you know I have I want my personal space what they say about Swedes it's really true in Germany it feels like everyone is so like locker what's it called like easy going maybe and I really like that I think for some for other people who are from like, I don't know, Spain or, I don't know. I think they probably think that Germans are not easy going at all. They're quite stiff, but for us, as a Swede, I think Germans are very, like, I think it's very easy to get to know people and everyone's like super open and like hugging and kissing on cheeks. And for me and my Swedish giving me my personal space kind of manner. I was a bit shocked and I was always like, how many times should you kiss? Should you kiss once, twice, th three times? And it's so awkward when you don't know the code. So that's something which I found very different. And I really like, I don't know, I really like Germans. I really, not only because I fell in love with one, but I don't know, I really like them. And it's like, I before I knew German, <laughs> German was like 
one of the ugliest languages I knew. It's like, sorry, all Finnish people and all Germans, but Finnish and German, they were like, Ugh. they sound so angry and like so harsh. But now, once I understand German, I can speak it myself. I think it's a very, very nice language. I don't know. I think it sounds like I like the way they talk. I like the way they like gesture. Like they do like little things with their faces when they say like. When you ask them something and they like agree to it or something and you're gonna say like yeah it's a good idea then they're always doing like no 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 <laughs> oh, this looks so shitty and um another thing which is really difficult about germany is like jesus they're so behind like if you at least berlin if you when you're from sweden like it's a super modern country it's like you never have cash for example you do everything with your phone, you can do taxes with your phone, you can do everything with your phone or like bank ID and like all this kind of stuff which you take for granted because it's like in Sweden it's like it's the way it works, it's like everything else is just why would you do it, time consuming. Here everything is manual, everything is per paper, they even use faxes still, who's even using fax? I don't know if people actually use it but they always have like, they always have like fax number and blah. I mean, I don't think I've ever seen a fax in action, actually. Fax in action, actually. That was a weird sentence. Oh, this looks so bad. Whatever, it's charming. Like, they have so many different places for so many... Uh, like, for different purposes, and it's so annoying, and you always have to go there, you have to book a time, and... Uh, it's just really... It's like, when you're moving, you can't just do that online. No, then you have to go to Rathaus, and, like, <laughs> you have to first book an appointment, and it says that you have to, like, register your your that you're moving i think within two weeks or something like that but then when you try to get an appointment for it you don't get an appointment for like two months i'm not joking and then you have to go there and then even if you have your appointment let's say at 12 o'clock you probably anyway you need to be prepared to sit there and wait for like it take one hour maybe it takes so long and it's like so annoying and it's like the only thing you get when you go in there, it's like you get a little paper with a stamp on it saying that you moved. And it's like, why? I mean, in Sweden you just do that online. Uh, what else? I'm not only talking about negative stuff now. But yeah, they're very unmodern, they're very like complicated, they're very... They love paper, they love... Long processes and you have to send everything per... per like per post. And then when you get your salary, you pay a lot, like the taxes are quite high. I'm not sure like what the percentage uh, is because I never remember this kind of stuff. Um, but that that is because you pay your insurance every month. So when I go to the doctor, I don't have to pay anything. If I go to the dentist, I don't have to pay anything. So you think like, oh my god, it's for free, but actually you pay for it every month to use this kind of service. But still, uh, for example, today I went to the dentist just to do a check, and they also like did like some cleaning and stuff and I didn't have to pay anything and if I wouldn't have had to like repair you say repair, fix something do like a filling or something it would have been for free or I wouldn't have to pay anything because my insurance company is covering all of that so that's very nice I mean in Sweden dentists can be a very expensive thing they only really concentrated right now so what tips can I give you if you want to move abroad well, first of all, just do it. If you want to do it, then do it. It's like, even if I did it because of love, I didn't do it because I had a genuine interest or passion for Berlin or Germany. Like, even if I move back to Sweden one day, it's like, I will never regret that I have lived here or that I'm living here. It's like, But yeah, like I said, it's like a decision I will never regret. And I grew so much. You know, it's like you have to learn being a grown-up. Like, even if I... I was a grown-up when I moved here, I knew how Sweden worked, I had my parents helping me because I asked them if I was something I didn't know. Now it was like you have to, had to redo it and figure things out. Of course there were people I had to ask, but I did a lot myself. And it's like you have to... I don't know, it's like a very... It's a, sometimes I just realize like, wow, I moved to another country, I learned another language, like a foreign language. That for five years ago I didn't know at all. And now I live here. This is like this is not how I I could never imagine my life would turn out this way. But here I am and I'm I'm very happy that I'm here. It's like 
I don't know, it's, it's, a very, it's a very cool experience. Of course, there are always like things you miss about Sweden, but it's like... What I actually miss the most is of course my family and my friends. But I think... Besides that, Sweden and Germany is like... It's actually it's very similar, it's like really nothing I can say that... Yeah, of course, sometimes you think like, yeah, in Sweden it's so easy. Yeah, it's easy because you know how it works. But I mean, once you figure out how it works here and once you go to that... Finance Amtro, once you go to the... Like, once you get it done, you feel very very good. You feel like, wow, well, there's nothing I can handle. I mean, sure, I had no idea how it worked, but I figured it out and there you go. There's like these things which hit me, hits me over and over again. For example, I was at a party a couple of weeks ago and I was standing talking to a guy. He had no idea I was from Sweden. And then he started talking about like an old TV host or something like that. He asked for my opinion, and then I had to say, sorry, I don't know who this is, I'm not from Germany. Like, because it's, it was like a man who everyone else knew, but if I would say like, yeah, do you know Arne Weisse, for example, it's a Swedish TV host. A, a person who wouldn't be from Sweden wouldn't know it. So I was like, yeah, sorry, I'm not from, I'm not from Germany, so I, I don't know who that is. He was like, what? You're not from Germany? I was so sure. And that's, that is, that is such a cool feeling. That is like, you can't describe it because you just like want to pat yourself on the shoulder and be like, Julia, you're quite awesome, you know? Like, I don't want to brag, I just want to encourage people to do the same. I, I want to encourage people to move, learn a language, do it, because it's like, it makes you grow, it makes you, it makes you feel really, really good about yourself. The same is like, I text in Swedish with my friends and family, Meanwhile, I have a person next to me speaking German or someone speaking English and I'm like, my brain is everywhere and it's, it's, it's such an amazing thing and it makes you really like, I don't know, it makes you really rich in a way. I actually should have written down some, some like bullet points so I wouldn't know exactly what to talk about. Um, about moving here, yeah, what else can I say? Like, when it comes to like, registration and so on, I don't know where you're from when, you, like, when you're watching this video. But for example, in Sweden, I think you're allowed to live in another country. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think you're allowed to live in a country, if you plan on staying longer than six months, then you should immediately tell the Skatteverket, I don't know what it's called, like tax company. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna deal with that. If when I know that I'm gonna stay longer than six months. So I went here and then I kind of forgot about it, of course. In really? Sweden you get money when you're studying and I was studying this German course. I told them my, my German address and then of course they told the tax company, then they contacted me and said like, yeah, hey Julia, we heard that you're living in another country. You, you are aware that you have to tell us according to this paragraph, like, it's like, you have to tell us. It's like, you yeah, forgot, sorry. So if you're moving to another country and you know about you know that you're staying long, then just do it right away and then... Yeah, that's like one tip I have, that you just take care of all the paperwork immediately as soon as you know how long you're gonna stay and when you know where you're gonna live as well. Getting an apartment here can be really hard. Like, I again, I feel like such a little lucky brat, you know? <laughs> because I'm again gonna say that I actually found an apartment very quickly. It was like a friend of a friend, and I think that's the best way to go at it. Anyway, so if you have contacts in Germany or in Berlin or wherever you want to live, then talk to them first because that's, I think, that's the easiest way. Uh, it's very common to live like in a shared flat here, but I wouldn't want to do that. I don't know, I like my privacy too much. You, most people who move to Berlin, they want to live in Kreuzberg or Neukölln or Prenzlauer Berg and so on. But you know, I didn't really move to Berlin for Berlin here for other reasons so I don't I don't want to live in those places you know it's not for me I really don't I'm not such a fan of of East you know so I live in West Berlin and I really like it and I wouldn't like even if I have like quite a journey to work I would never move because of that never ever I love my apartment too much okay take a look at this it's such a mess! Look at the door and everything. When it comes to food, what I miss most about Swedish food is like snacks. I mean, Sweden is such a snack country, I realized. It's like our chips and our cheese doodles and like candy and here it's like... If you want to snack something, sure they have chips, but they have like lace chips, you know, like, like 
rectangles. Yeah, so that's actually the, the thing I miss the most. But it's also quite good because, I mean, candy is obviously not healthy for you. And when you don't have the option to, to buy this kind of snacks you actually really like, then I just skip it. Food-wise, I mean, you can always, like, you can cook everything. I mean, sure, I'm from north of Sweden where we have, like, moose meat and everything very often because, like, my dad and my brothers are hunting, so we always have access to, like, moose meat and stuff. And, of course, I don't eat that when I'm here. But, I mean, that's, like, a luxury. And, um, but besides that, you can cook everything. If, if I would have a craving for something, for, like, a Swedish dish, I can just make it myself. So it's never actually really a, an issue. Another thing, which is very Swedish, of course, is the fika culture, where you go out for coffee and cake. And if you want to do the same here, eh, they can't really do that. They can't really do fika like Swedish people. It's like the the, the fika, like the, the, the cake you can buy, they're usually very boring, I think. I think it's because I'm used to like all the goodies we have. But then again, I love baking, so I'd rather bake it myself then. I mean, this house is so ugly. I don't know, I was... I went in for this with so much confidence. And now... I should just learn that gingerbread houses is not for me. If you want to look for a job, you don't really have to worry if you're in Berlin about knowing German. Especially if you're like looking for a job at like a startup or... English is usually the language they speak. So, yeah, if you want to look for a job here, then don't worry, you can come here without knowing the language. It's not going to be an issue for you. And if you want to learn the language, the best way is without a doubt being in the country. Reach a point when you just... I think it's like that with every language. You learn, you learn, you learn, but you don't really dare to speak. But once you like come over that little barrier of being afraid of speaking, then it just goes like this, I think. And then like that's like you have to to dare to talk to people. I mean, just just start small, just start in the supermarket saying thank you, or just try to order in German or whatever language you are, you want to learn. And I mean, no one's gonna make fun of you. Okay, some people will. It happened to me that people left in the beginning that I pronounced things wrong, and that's rude, you don't do that. I don't know if I'm sensitive, but that's like, if someone is trying to learn a language, the worst thing you can do is to make fun of the way this person pronounces the word. It's like, Jesus Christ, come on. Anyway, so... But most people will like, appreciate that you're trying and... All in all, I always get got like, very positive feedback and people like, encourage you to speak and they like, listen to you pa patiently and... Yeah, they're not gonna judge or make fun of you or whatever. When I was gonna move to Germany, I was so scared. I was like, I had moments where I was like, what am I gonna do there? What if I don't get a job? What if I, what if I never learn? I'm never gonna learn the language. I'm never gonna understand German. I'm never, how should I, you know? But I mean, it always works out. Things always works out. And usually for the best, so. Don't worry too much. If you want to move to another country, then try it. But that's also something I thought about uh, before I moved to Germany. I was like, if I don't take this chance now to move to another country, I'm gonna regret it. I'm gonna be 70 and I'm gonna... No, I didn't dare to follow my heart. My boyfriend didn't have the opportunity to move to Sweden back then, so the only option for us to be together, not in a long distance relationship, was for me to move there because I finished my studies. And I don't think we would have kept on going if I wouldn't have moved because, come on, three years of long distance is more than enough. Uh, so, if I would have just given up and said like, no, sorry, I'm not moving, let's break up, I would have regretted that so badly. Like, all, the, all my friends I have here, all the opportunities I have, uh, and then when I compare them, what, what my opportunities would have been if I would have stayed in this little town in northern Sweden, like another life it's, it's another life so if you want if you if you want to if you want to try something just do it and this is coming from a person who is an overthinker a planner uh, need to know about the future who just dropped everything and kind of you know just went out into the unknown and it turned out fine 
I turned out fine and you're gonna turn out fine too. So just go for it. You're gonna regret it if you don't. And Sweden or whatever country you're coming from, it's not gonna go anywhere. It's gonna be there waiting for you in case you wanna go back. Okay, guys, <laughs> this is my gingerbread house. <laughs> I know it looks really sad. I'm ashamed. Ugh. And I'm a designer. I can't publish this. Let's put some snow on it. First, I'm gonna move it over to a. Ooh, interesting. If it's gonna break now, I think I'm gonna. I was gonna say cry, but actually, I don't think I would cry. I think I would be happy because then I have a reason to throw it away. Look at that. It worked out fine. Like everything else in life. Isn't that a nice little thing? I don't know why I did that with the door because it looks <laughs> really crazy. <gasps> All the candies are falling down. Oh, I'm gonna eat them out. Let's skip that. It's gonna be a mess. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. I hope you guys enjoyed this little chit chat with me about uh, living abroad, even though it was a bit messy, but that's me in my life, I guess. Um, and that you also enjoyed watching me decorate the probably ugliest gingerbread house of 2017. I'm ashamed because in the end, I'm a designer. <laughs> Take care until next time. Don't forget to like my video and subscribe to my channel. Mwah. It would be funny if I would sneeze right now. Hi, everybody. Ho, ho, hello. Hi. Hello. Hi, everyone. I feel like a news reporter.